Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Marla. I make videos every week of the things that I make that you can make too. This video is actually part two of a um, yarn crafting project. Uh, in the first part, I showed you how to knit these dishcloths. Here is an example of what we did in the first uh, first part of this video last week and this time we're going to learn how to crochet so i'm going to show you how to make this one um, that is done in rows here and then also we're going to work on uh, one that you actually do in the round which you might not be able to tell on this one but here's the beginning of the one that we're going to work on today uh, to make this round um, little dishcloth but what I think is important to note is once you learn these basic um, stitches, whether it's knitting or crochet, you can make a much larger project than this. This is just getting you started, gives you a chance to practice. It's the size project that you could do in just a couple hours, you know, sitting on the, by the TV watching a movie. Um, and I think then you end up with something that's very useful in, in a cloth, dish, dish cloth, something that you can use in your kitchen. So let's go ahead and get started. The difference between knitting and crochet is the needle that you use. For crochet, you use one needle that has a hook on the end. And with knitting, like we did last week, we use these straight needles. Today we'll be using this same cotton yarn that we used for our knitting projects last week. It's 100% cotton. It's great for uh, dish cloths and it works really well if you're just learning how to crochet. It also, the packaging does give a recommended needle size. Although I will be using a larger needle um, today than what the package says, just because for me, um, one, I think it will be easier for you to see as I'm demonstrating, but also I tend to crochet a little tighter and so a larger needle will help with that. I will be crocheting the majority of the projects uh, right-handed. It is how I crochet, even though I am left-handed. My uh, mom taught me how to crochet right-handed when I was young, um, and so that's how I've always done it. But at the end of this video, I will be showing how to crochet left-handed. So for those of you who are left-handed and are struggling with learning how to crochet, hopefully that will help. I had to actually review a video uh, to learn how to do it myself. So I will include that video in the description box um, because that person is clearly more of an expert at it than I am. And then I'll include a little demo of this scrubby yarn. I mean, it's for making dishcloths, so I'll show that as well. All right, let's get started with how to crochet. Start your crochet project with a slip knot right over left, then you tuck that right part of the yarn through the loop from the back to the front to create your slip knot. This is the same way we started our knitting project last week, but you attach that slip knot to your crochet hook and then we're ready to create our chain. First step is to determine how you're going to hold the needle in your hand. Uh, there's a couple different ways of doing this and it's really personal preference so you'll just have to practice to decide what you prefer you can either have your hand under the needle like holding a pencil similar to holding a pencil or you can do it where you have your hand above the needle more like you're holding a knife in your hand um, this is the way I crochet with my hand above the needle, um, and it allows my index finger to control the yarn that's on the needle. So I prefer this method. And so now we're gonna create our foundation chain. The way you do a chain stitch is you um, wrap the yarn around your needle and pull it through the loop that is on your hook. So you wrap around the yarn that's on your left hand, you pull it through the hook, and then you create the number of chains um, that you'll need for your project. So for this project, we're gonna be doing 
um, 20 loops or chains for our foundation chain. The process of wrapping the hook around the yarn is called yarn over. So what we're doing is yarn over and then we're pulling the hook back through the loop. It's really important while you're doing this process that you're moving your left thumb up your chain because you want that chain to remain straight. You don't want to twist um, your stitches at all. You want all the V's to be showing on one side. And then uh, just like with knitting, you have the V on the one side and you have the bump on the back side. So you just want to be sure that if you have done any twisting, that when you go to do your next row, that you just straighten that out so that it remains consistent across the whole row. V's on the one side and the bumps on the other. Once you've completed your foundation chain, you just want to count your stitches to make sure you have the number that you're needing for your project. So you want 20 stitches um, for this dishcloth, and then you want one additional stitch on the end because that's going to be your turning chain. So that first stitch there on the end is your turning chain. So that becomes your first single crochet. Um, now we're going to start along our row. I'm crocheting right handed here, so I'm going right to left. And what we're going to do here is a little different than some people actually do. I prefer to have my initial row um, where I use the stitch in the back. So the bump in the back is what we're going to use to make our stitches. This is a little more complicated and I'm going to show you a little later how to do it the other way, um, but I do feel like it produces a much neater edge because then all the V's end up showing on the back of your, at the bottom of your project. Um, and I think it's um, just, it, it just then means your top and your bottom are going to match. So let's talk here about how we do a single crochet stitch. That's what I'm doing here. So the first step is to stick your needle into the bump that you're seeing um, in our chain. You may need to use your fingernail to get the hook around it. You yarn over the, um, the yarn on your left hand. So let's do it again through the loop on the chain, yarn over, back through the hole, yarn over, and then pull it through the two loops on your needle. Slow it down a little bit here. So we're gonna put our needle through the bump on the back of the chain. I'm using my nail to pull through. Yarn over the yarn, pull it back through the bump. Now I have two loops on my needle. I'm gonna yarn over again and pull it through those two loops. And that's the full single crochet. Going through the bump on the back is what creates the V's along the bottom of your project here. This is what I was talking about earlier. If, you, if we've gone through just the loop on the chain, which is the other way to do it, then you just have a spiral loop along the bottom instead. So now we're going to keep going along that row until we've completed all 20 stitches. It's really important that you make sure that you get that last stitch. Sometimes it's kind of small and hard to see. So uh, one thing you could do is actually count your stitches at this point. Make sure you still have 20 stitches along um, your row and that way you'll know that you've gotten them all. So now that we've completed our first row, we're going to turn our work and start our next row. Now we're going to start row two. To start row two, the first thing you do is do a chain one. So we're going to yarn over and pull through just like we did our chain row. And then we turn our work to start our next row. That chain one becomes the first stitch in your second row. So in order to accommodate for that, you don't actually put your needle in the first V, you put your needle through the second V of this chain. 
because the first one is that single crochet. So now we're going to do single crochets along the row. To do that, we stick our needle through where the V is. We yarn over and pull it back through under the V. Now we have two loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through both um, of the loops on the hook. And that's again the single crochet. So now we're just going to keep going down the row through the V's, yarn over, back through the V, yarn over, pull through the two loops. I forgot to mention, it's also important to keep the yarn tension um, consistent on your left hand. So I have it wrapped around my pinky and then wrapped around my index finger. And you can see I move my index finger up or down to adjust the tension. I need the, um, the, the yarn wrapped in such a way that it can flow around my fingers so that the stitches are not too tight. So just keep that in mind uh, and adjust your tension in your left hand as you need to. If you're working along with me, you might want to um, pause the video and just keep working down this row and then I'll meet you at the other end. So now that we're end, at the end of this row too, uh, we want to be sure that we don't miss that last one. It's pretty big here, but a lot of times that last stitch is kind of small. Um, so we want to be sure we've added our last single crochet and then we do a chain one turn. So the size of that chain one is what determines how big that stitch is when you get there um, the next time you come around. You'll notice again that I skipped that first V there because that chain one becomes that first stitch. And that's what gives you that straight line up the side of your project. If you miss a stitch or you, um, you do put a stitch in that V on the end, you're going to be adding stitches or taking away stitches. So you'll end up with either 19 or 21. So again, it's always good to count your work and make sure um, you still have your 20 stitches. So now we've gotten three, four, five rows up. Um, we have all our V's in a row. We've got our, we can count to make sure we have our 20 stitches. So um, we're still in line with the number of stitches we need. If for some reason you've skipped a stitch or added, you could pull out um, stitches and go back and fix it. But now at this point, we're just going to keep doing our chain one turn, skip our first V and continue down the row until our project uh, is the same size as it is wide. To do that, we're going to determine our width using our little ruler here. This project is uh, with 20 stitches and the size needle I'm using ends up being about five inches wide. And so we want it to be about five inches tall. So we're about halfway there. And here, I just wanna mention when you're turning your work, you wanna be sure that the working yarn is actually facing to the back, not the front. So it does matter how you turn your work from your needle. You wanna turn um, right to left, not left to right, so that your yarn ends up in the back, not in the front. Um, just a tip, that way um, your stitches will remain looking consistent all the way around. Once you've completed all um, five inches and your project is square, pretty much square, you're going to just cut your yarn and then just do a slip knot through and tie off the end. And then your project is done. And then to just clean up the ends, you're just going to use a darning needle and weave the end into the project um, just a couple of times just to tie off that end so it doesn't get loose. And then just trim off the rest of that yarn. All right, next we're going to take the crochet skills we've learned so far and do a new project where we work crochet double crochets in the round. 
So to start off, we're going to start with our slip knot on our hook, and then we're going to chain four. And now that we have our four um, chains, we need to connect this into um, a circle so that we can start working in the round. The way we do that, if we, we stick our hook into that first chain, we pull it through, and then just through again that chain four stitch. And that's gonna make, um, that's gonna connect our chain into a circle. Now you can hold that tail around the circle and weave it in now, or you can weave it in later. But this project is made up of double crochets and single chains, and we're making a square here. So um, the way we're gonna start out is chain five. Once you have your five um, on your chain, that's gonna represent one of the double crochets. So to do a double crochet, the difference between that and a single crochet is we actually wrap the yarn around the needle. We yarn over before we start the stitch. So yarn over in the hole, yarn over, and now you'll see there's actually three loops on the hook um, at that point. So when you yarn over in the hole, yarn over, three on the hook, you go through two, yarn over and through two, and that creates the double crochet, that, that um, post. To make the corner, we chain two, and now we keep going all in that same hole. You're doing the yarn over, through two, yarn over, through two. So again, if you wanna pause the video and practice a couple of times, um, that might help. Um, just to get comfortable with the double crochet. Uh, the difference is the number of times that you yarn over through that start. So now we're gonna chain two again because we're at the corner. We actually do three double crochets on each side of this square to start with. So that's our first double crochet on this third side. We're gonna put three double crochets on this side, all of these stitches are going in that same center hole. So this is gonna be our third double crochet, chain over through the hole, and then just keep going. All right, to finish this row, we need another corner and two more double crochets. So we're gonna do chain two for our corner and then two more double crochets because that chain five is the third double crochet and the corner. Um, so we're just gonna do two more double crochets here, that's one, and then a second double crochet. And then of that chain five, three of them is a double crochet and the top two is the corner. So to finish off, we're going to insert our needle in the third chain we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. So that's what's gonna connect our, um, our work into a ring. So now we have our first row with our four sides and our four corners. All right, now to start row two, the first thing we're gonna do is chain three because that's gonna now create our second, the start of our second row and our first double crochet. That chain three always becomes one of the double crochets. So that chain three is actually on the side. It's not on the corner. In creating the corners, as you go around, each corner gets two double crochets, two chains, and two double crochets. And that's what's gonna increase the size of the rows as we go along. So that's two double crochets. We're gonna chain two and then two double crochet. You do all of that within that corner and that's what creates the second row corner. So that's the first double crochet. 
on this side and now we'll do our second double crochet again in that corner so we've completed our entire corner now for our sides in our first row we had three double crochets on each side so we need to add three double crochets above those double crochets you notice the hole that you need to put your needle in is just to the left of the post so that's one and then we're going to put one in each of the other two double crochets but it's important to know where the hole is that you need especially when you get to this corner because it's a little harder to see um, as you go because it's it might it just might not be as clear so i just want to be sure that you note that the hole that you're putting your needle in is just to the left of the post now we're at another corner and for each corner, as I said before, two double crochets, two chains, and two double crochets. Now, as I mentioned before, you're adding two double crochets in each corner. So each row on each side you add four double crochets each time you go so that first row was three and now that second row has seven double crochets on each side now just continue to work your way around this whole row um, just continuing as you were doing completing your three double crochets in the middle and your two double crochets two chains and two double crochets in each corner making sure that each side ends up with seven double crochets when you're done when we get to the end we do the same thing that we did on that first row which is connecting that chain three to complete this um, you know close in the circle and complete this row so that chain is one of the seven on that side insert your hook in the top of that chain yarn over pull through the chain and then pull through the other loop and then you're done with that row and now you just keep going adding rows uh, until the project measures the size that you're wanting your dishcloth to be and then just a reminder so that um, you're you know counting every once in a while to make sure they're the same each side as you add a new row increases by four double crochets so first we had three then we had seven and then in this next row we have 11 and so every row um, at you you increase by four double crochets as you get larger and here i just want to show you again um, a reminder that you're not putting your needle in the hole on the right when you get to this corner and you're starting your double crochets along your side the uh, v or the hole of the stitch below is to the left of that post um, sometimes i've made that mistake where i've put a stitch um, in that um, corner space instead by mistake and then it ends up adding an extra uh, double crochet on that side, so you don't wanna make that mistake. And also here, when you're connecting your row, sometimes it's hard to tell where the last stitch is. So the same thing, you wanna um, go just left of the post above, below it, and then connect to your chain three. The other thing I do sometimes here when I'm connecting is I just count my stitches and just make sure it's the same. Um, so I haven't added a stitch or deleted one. So here now I've completed all of my rows. I have um, five rows, I believe there. And so to finish it off, I'm just going to connect my chain three, just like we did with every other row, um, just to connect our, you know, close our, our circle here. Um, and then in order to finish it off, I'm just, I don't do this on all of them, but some of them I just do a chain. Uh, I think I do six or eight here. And then I just wrap it around to make a loop, like a little handle for 
um, this little pot holder. That way you can put it on a hook if you want to, um, you know, on your wall or on your fridge and um, hang it up. But all you do is just connect it together and make the loop just like we did our first loop. Cut the tail and tie it off and you're done. This is a smaller one um, from earlier. I just wanted to mention this pattern is a granny square, if you're not familiar with that. And uh, once you, when you create these squares, you can do it where you have different colors for each row um, and different you know, styles. This is one style of granny square, there are several. But what you can do is make multiples of these little squares and then you can actually just connect them together on the sides and make a, you can make a big blanket even uh, with these little granny squares. So we just made dishcloths today, but you can actually use this pattern to make a much larger project if you'd like. Here is that scrubby yarn that I showed you earlier. Uh, I have to say it's, it's not, the easiest yarn to work with uh, because those little tails get caught and it's a little hard to identify when you have um, you know like where your needle is supposed to go uh, it what I would recommend if you try this the the way I did it is I just didn't really um, care whether I was putting the needle exactly where it needed to go I just moved along um, feeling with my thumb where I thought the hole was and then I would insert the hook so um, it's it certainly becomes a useful scrubby uh, dishcloth when you're done but I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for a first project the yarn gets caught a lot on the needle and just um, kind of creates knots in the middle that kind of thing but um, I just wanted to at least show you this so you saw that this is, is certainly possible. The other thing you could do is instead of sticking the needle into the top of the V like we do uh, with regular crochet, I'm doing double crochets here by the way if you can't tell, uh, one of the things you can do is just stick your needle in between the posts of the double crochet. Uh, the hole is bigger when you do that and that might be easier or an easier way to um, just create the weave. Honestly with with crochet as long as you just whatever pattern you're following however you're doing it if as long as you just keep consistently doing it the same way <laughs> you'll be fine either way. So here's the one I did earlier. It ended up being about the same size as the other ones. And I, you know, I think it's a great dishcloth, so give it a try. Now for this last part, I'm gonna show you how to crochet left-handed. I know I mentioned earlier that, um, it, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed, uh, you can crochet either way. Both hands have a job either way. Uh, I am left-handed, but I was having a conversation with my mom and she mentioned she had tried to teach my stepsister how to um, crochet and she wasn't able to be successful because she was left-handed and she just wasn't getting how to do it right-handed. So um, I told her that I would attempt to um, include left-handed crochet here. So like I said, even though I'm left-handed, I crochet right-handed. So this was my first time <laughs> crocheting left-handed was I had to watch a video myself to learn how to do it because it is certainly uh, a different experience when you're used to doing something a certain way. But I do have to say what else it taught me is it gave me a new respect for what it feels like to uh, be brand new at this. So I can honestly say that I too know what you're going through. If you're new at crocheting and you're just trying to learn and it feels awkward and you're struggling, I went through that too here learning how to do it left-handed. I will actually include below the video that I um, watch to help me learn how to uh, crochet left-handed so you can see someone who is much more uh, experienced at crocheting left-handed than I am here. 
So hopefully you can see, I am doing exactly the same thing I did um, when I was doing my chain, my foundation chain, uh, when I was doing it the right-handed way. All you're doing is uh, making sure the tension of the yarn in your right hand is uh, tight enough to keep your tension the same, but loose enough that the yarn can flow through. I'm keeping my thumb on the chain so that I'm moving it forward so the chain isn't twisting. And then I'm just wrapping the hook on the left through the rope and through the chain. Now you can see, because I'm new at this, uh, I've, I've got a little, um, some tension issues certainly in how I created this chain, but um, I, I think it looks okay. I actually practiced several times, so um, I think we'll move forward with this chain and move on to single crochets. I actually redid this chain just so that it was loose enough. I, I think that's a common problem with a new crocheter is just um, crocheting too tight. So now we're gonna start our single crochets. Um, I skipped that first chain just like uh, we did before. I'm gonna go into the second chain. I'm not gonna go in the bumps like I did um, on the first one when we were doing it right-handed. I'm actually gonna go into the Vs. So I mentioned there were two different ways of doing this initial row. And so this is where I'm gonna show you how to do it where you're just going into that top loop of the V to make the single crochets. I do think this is easier um, than going through that back bump. The first row is always the harder, the hardest. It's just really fiddly and hard to keep it straight. So it's really important to just go slow, uh, making sure that you're not twisting your chain and um, continuing to work your way down. So the process is the same. It's just with the needle in the left hand, you're gonna stick the, the hook into the top of the chain. Sometimes it's a little hard. You need to use your fingernail or your finger. I need to, I was adjusting um, the tension. Yarn over through the hoop and then through the second loop. I'm not sure if you can tell here, but I'm struggling with trying to figure out how to do this. It's so interesting that um, I could practically crochet, uh, you know, in the dark <laughs> uh, because I've done it so many times. But for some reason here, it, you know, when you're doing something different that you haven't but done before, it can be a struggle. So I definitely understand if you're new at this, how um, strange it feels and how your hands um, just don't seem to be doing exactly what you're wanting them to do. And it takes some time to figure out the tension and the rhythm. But if you just keep at it, um, you know, you'll get it over time. And, and even if you have to pull things out and start again and um, redo it, that's okay. That's what what practice and learning is all about. So this is a shot of the first one I tried and I think you can see I was crocheting so tight I could not even get the needle um, through the loops and you can see even the the foundation chain is um, is just much tighter and this is this is not what you want. Um, you want to be able to um, have the stitches loose enough that the needle can pretty much flow through. So if you're if you're knitting tight like this, I would recommend you um, you know just take it out, pull the needle further, loosen the tension with the yarn in your right hand so it flows a little smoother. Um, and then just keep practicing that to see if you can get it to loosen up because I know that's a common problem with uh, new crocheters is just crocheting too tight. Um, and it just takes practice to, to actually get that to loosen up. So now we're here at the end of our foundation chain. We want to be sure that we um, 
you know, finish all of the rows. Looks like I have um, two left. So um, we're just gonna do the same thing. Yarn over, pull through the one, and then yarn over and pull through the two. And then um, to finish off, we have that one more stitch. Ah, no, I was wrong. Evidently, there is this one little tiny stitch here at the end. So again, this is what happens when you're um, crocheting too tight. So um, I just make, you know, find a way to get my uh, hook in there with my fingernails and keep pushing until you do. But again, the better way to do this is just to crochet looser from the very beginning. But if you do find this is the case, when you've counted your stitches and you're missing one, uh, it's because there's a little tiny, um, you know, loop on the end that you need to add that last stitch to. So just keep pushing and you'll get the hook in. Now we're gonna do our chain one turn, just like we did to get to our next row. So chain one and then turn. Remember we talked about you wanna turn in such a way that your working yarn is in the back, not in the front. You wanna skip that first stitch because that is your, you've already done that with your chain one turn and you're gonna start your first single crochet in your second. Um, second hook or I mean second V. So same thing we're just going to continue to work down the row inserting our hook yarn over pull back through where we inserted the hook yarn over and pull through two. So um, if you are working along you could pause the video and continue down this row and I'll meet you at the other end. Can you tell how much tighter I'm crocheting um, left-handed than I am right-handed? Again, I, I think it's just something to keep in mind. Um, that I think it just naturally happens when you're new at something and you're kind of tense. One of the things that I would recommend is, um, <clears throat> you know, take the time to notice whether your hands are, are stiff or tense or aching. Uh, be sure you're sitting in a comfortable chair, relax, um, take breaks, go slow. Uh, notice if you're if you're tensing or you're having trouble getting the needle through the edge. I think that makes a difference as well. Um, I did a few different practice um, pieces and I did find that after a while it um, I started to loosen up. I went instead of um, hunched over this counter with a camera in between me, I uh, went and sat down in a chair and it did help to just um, relax a little bit. Now I also wanted to show the double crochet left-handed here. So I went up the two chains up the edge. When you're doing straight rows, um, you want that double crochet on the end to be as tall as a regular double crochet would be. So you would do um, two chains up the side. Some people even do three chains, but because my double crochets are not as tall as someone who crochets looser. I just do two chains um, to create that double crochet on the end. But so uh, just as we um, were doing with the right-handed double crochet, what you're doing differently than you do with the single crochet is you actually yarn over when you start instead of sticking it in the under the V first. So you yarn over, stick the needle under the V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So it creates those multiple loops on that double crochet post. So yarn over, push under the V, yarn over, pull back through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So those are, uh, that's a row of double crochets on this dishcloth. 
So this is the one I finished. Um, I actually sat down um, in a comfortable chair and, uh, and just um, did single crochets all the way through. I was able to do it a little looser, which I was glad to see. I think my stitches got a little more even as I went along. Um, I did do the, uh, the initial row was done um, through the V, not through the bump in the back. So that's the top that shows the Vs. But here you can see what I talked about where it just has the loops um, going through. That's how it looks when you go through the Vs. So it's fine too. It just doesn't, um, if you want it to match the top row, then you go through the bumps in the back. All right, all our projects are done. You know, honestly, even I learned something new today. I hope you did, and I hope you give these projects a try. Thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't, and hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye.